We're finally getting these drawers and the backs finished. So this is the exterior of the drawers uh, that we finished in yesterday or last video, whenever it was. If this is the first video that you're watching, we're obviously working on building a set of cabinets. Um, jump back to the very beginning. If this is the first one, it'll make this make a whole lot of sense. Basically, we're working on cabinets for our laundry area over here, which is kind of our primary cooking area right now. It's a simple set of lower and upper cabinets. We set up the shopsmith in the first couple of videos and got it dialed and tuned in. And then we cut and assembled the boxes for the lower cabinets. And then we cut the stock for all of our drawers, all that stuff there. Then we worked on cutting the dado joints that go in these drawers. And those look something like that. And then I think in the last video, we worked on sanding and finishing. I had some kind of lingering questions about sanding, whether I was working too hard. Uh, something that we did was we sanded in three stages. We did a one, 120, 150, and 220 on everything on the inside. And I had this lingering question about whether that was too much work. So what I did was I one step sanded this stuff at 220. And I can definitely say that the finish is not nearly as uniform. This finish turned out absolutely fantastic. It looks wonderful. And on this side, I only one step sanded, and I could say that the finish is a little less uniform. You can kind of see it there. And I think what that is, is a byproduct of the smoothness of the surface not being equal. So I think the answer to my question is, is it worth multi-step sanding? Yeah. But that's just the exterior of the drawers. You're not really gonna spend a lot of time looking at that. Alyssa and I had that conversation in the last video. We agreed that rough didn't look very good, even though it's an, a drawer and you're only gonna see it when it's open. I agreed that it was only a little bit of work to hit it with one level of sandpaper and then put a couple coats of lacquer on it. I think it was worth doing. Um, I did do the same thing here. I only one step sanded these backs and I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous that that might not be a good idea because that's gonna be a very visual part of the cabinet. You're gonna be looking right at it as you stare in there. The forgiving part of it is that there's not gonna be a lot of light inside the cabinet, so you're not gonna see a lot of that luster. So I have a decision to make about whether to two-step those or three. I might jump back and just do a 150 and then go back and do a 220. It shouldn't be a ton of work. So anyway, now you guys are caught up on where we are today. And so hopefully we can move on from this finishing step at some point today and start work on, working on getting the drawers assembled. Part of finishing this was also sealing the edge of the top that will actually be exposed to use and abuse. The front, back, and bottom won't see any use really, so no point in doing that. Um, I did take the time to bust out the, the uh, belt sander on the shopsmith, more out of personal curiosity. A, is it usable? Uh, B, is it user friendly and does it save me time? I was using the random orbital to hit these edges and it's really not designed for that. It tends to want to dive to one side or the other which nets you kind of a bite mark wherever you're trying to sand. Um, so I thought I'd just see and it worked great. I think it was a win. It was worth the time that it took to get it set up. The only bad thing is I only had a 150 grit belt. That's the finest grit we had. So we ended up hitting these with 150. I think it worked good enough. I think 220 would have been a little bit better, but good enough. So all this stuff has had a little bit of time to cure out and I would say it's turned out fantastic. I'm also not gonna judge all those pieces over there just yet, which is something I, it's a personal rule I have, don't judge paint till it's dry. 
usually looks worse when it's drying than it does once it's fully cured out. So we've got all these guys um, set up and they're curing out. We do need to get these backs finished and then we're set to start doing the drawer assembly. I think this is totally worth sharing. I sanded one side of all of those drawers, 16 sides, and I sanded all of these backs and that's the total dust that is sitting there from that exercise. I would say the dust collection on this vacuum and that sander are doing a fantastic job. When I pulled that filter off to clean the vacuum out, holy smokes, I knew it was gonna be some really fine stuff and it was really thick and fine. Um, I could tell toward the end of the last video that the filter was very, very plugged because of the tone of the vacuum was very high pitched. So cleaning that filter out is not a big deal. Um, I think using things like a dust deputy or whatever those things are, that's not gonna help this process because this is not a function of, of bulk. This is a function of dust. And the dust is gonna clog the filter long before the vacuum gets full. So this is really about keeping that filter clean. I'm thinking about even having a backup filter so if I get on a long project, I could just toss the filter outside, deal with it later, and throw a new one in. But so far, I would say our efforts to do dust collection on this entire project have been worth it, and they're doing a great job. So if you've been watching for a while, you know exactly what we're gonna be doing today, and that's using pocket hole joinery to build these drawers. If you're not sure what this is, jump back and watch the video where we assemble these boxes. What you're looking at here is a pocket hole joint with a pocket hole screw, and this is actually gonna be for the face frame, but this is also the same joinery that's holding these cabinets together, and we're gonna do the same thing with the drawers. One of the things that I liked about the Craig Jig option is that we can take things apart. So this whole assembly right here is not glued, it's only screwed together. So if we made a huge mistake or something like that, it can be corrected. And we did make one small mistake up here. So I wanna do the same thing here, except for I'm pretty confident that these drawers are spot on because we did a bunch of test fitting. I am a little concerned that I was a little aggressive with sanding and that maybe something there might be a fitment issue. Maybe I took off a little too much material, but hopefully that doesn't happen to us today. So when we assemble these, we are gonna be using glue. It's gonna make the drawer a lot stronger and that way we don't have to use a ridiculous amount of screws either. I'm not a cabinet expert, but in my mind, the box is fairly stationary. It doesn't really move, but the drawer is a living thing and it gets slammed and bammed and all this other stuff. So it needs every bit of help it can get where the box, fairly, fairly stationary. So one thing I'm not super certain about is what size of screw we should be using. The information from Craig is a little bit confusing. I did a bunch of research before I bought material and I came to the conclusion that I needed three quarter inch pocket screws, so that's what I bought. But then I was looking somewhere else and I saw that I needed one inch screws, so definitely got confused. So here's half inch material thickness. We should be using a one inch screw. Figure that one out. And I used the same information on Craig's website to buy these. So thankfully we've got one inch screws, but I don't think we should go straight to trying to join one of these drawers. I think we should take two pieces of half inch and do a test pocket joint. Cause like last time I screwed up and we would have drilled the improper hole. So let's do that first. Let's do a test joint and then we can start moving on to drawers. screw protruding but it feels like the screw is not biting a whole bunch maybe we should have tested that before we put those in there well it's got about a half inch of bite which is what I would expect for half inch material right yeah it's not a lot not a lot of bite but that's all you're gonna get because that's as thick as the material is so it seems like I'm spinning the screw inside the material already. 
something's not right. Like that should be biting way harder. Both of these screws are spun inside the material. So I kind of wonder if maybe using a coarse thread screw might work better. I kind of already see a problem is that when you set this to the three quarter inch long screw, that bit will actually drill all the way into the Craig jig, so that's not good. But let's try this. We'll just see if we can get a better, a better joint out of a three quarter inch fine thread. So I don't think these are drilled deep enough is what I'm trying to say. They're too shallow, but. So that one's also spun. Just not getting enough bite. That's a much stronger, well, it's much tighter. And if that were glued, it would be even better. I'm afraid if I drop the drill bit any farther, it's gonna drill this deeper so we get more penetration on the screw. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we probably need one inch fine thread screws instead of the one inch coarse. If we try to put inch and a quarter coarse or inch and a quarter fine thread, the head of the screw would stick out because it would have to be up so high that I don't think you could do that. So kind of in a rock and a hard spot here, we have to decide if we want one inch coarse, which technically is what this should be using, or do we want to try to stick with the fine thread and accept that we're not going to get super good penetration. Might try to drill that hole just a hair deeper and see if we can get a little bit closer without going through the bottom here. that time because we're so deep we end up popping through the bottom which is not good but that's as, that's absolutely as deep as we can go that spun pretty much instantly that one has more bite for sure but looks like it's trying to blow out the side of the plywood um i'd say it's probably equivalent to what we had before aka not impressive i mean look at that doesn't take much to rip it apart so Maybe we should go back to the one inch and kind of play with that a little bit and try to get it fine tuned to where we feel like it's giving us the best joint possible. I can't quite understand why this stuff is spinning so quickly in the material. Part of the problem is that this is only three ply, so we're only getting through maybe two plies, maybe. Kind of sucks. Well, out of curiosity, I pulled out my inch and a quarter and that's what we use to join the three quarter pieces. And it blew through the back here, which is why you're supposed to use one inch, right? Um, it seems like the one inch course provides the best joint. The three quarter fine thread just doesn't have enough bite. If I had some one inch uh, fine thread, we might have luck, but I don't, don't have any. So um, we'll stick with what we are supposed to use and I guess we'll just kind of have to deal with it. I do believe that the glue will substantially increase the strength of these joints. So I think with the screws and the glue, I don't think we have anything to worry about. So for those who don't know about pocket hole joinery, it's really a trick of hiding the pockets uh, so that they're concealed when the cabinet's all finished. Uh, so for example, the ones that are on these cabinets will actually be hidden either by the adjoining cabinet so in the case of this cabinet, the cabinet that goes on this side will actually hide those screws. And those are actually going to be holding the face frame to the cabinet out here. In the case of the end panels where the cabinets terminate, we're actually gonna have a finished end panel that will either brad nail on, glue on, something like that, that will end up concealing those. So as it pertains to the drawers, what we're gonna do is the pocket holes will only be in the fronts and the backs. So this side of the drawer is unfinished and this is the inside of the drawer. So where the front of the drawer itself sits, we're going to have a finished drawer front. So this is just the drawer itself. 
and then we'll have a finished piece of wood that will go over that that will be visible from the outside. And of course, the very back of the drawer, well, you'll never see that. It's gonna be buried in the cabinet unless you remove it. So those two sides is what we're gonna use for the pocket hole joinery. So what we need to do is drill pocket holes down through here which will allow us to attach to the drawer bottom, which in our case happens to be half inch. And then we need pocket holes going this direction and this direction so that we can connect to the sides. That way the sides, you'll actually have no visible pocket screws from the outside. And from the bottom, you'll also have no visible pocket screws. Let's go ahead and do one drawer, and get it all screwed together. I don't like the idea of taking them back apart too much because I think it kind of weakens the screw joint. So let's just do one so that we can take it apart. If everything's good, we'll screw it and glue it. And then in the future, we'll just screw and glue. I did a little bit of sanding on these, remember? And so they're just a hair, just a hair taller. I don't think it's worth it to sand those down, but it sure is nice for fit and finish when everything fits perfectly. And I mean, we're talking less than a 64th of a difference, but that's all it takes for things to start not fitting. sure if that's bowing because of my clamps or what I don't even know that it is bowing but maybe that's just an uneven edge uh, something tells me it's bowing so maybe I clamped it a little too hard maybe that stuff will drive you nuts if you're a perfectionist getting every last little thing to fit and line up and I guess that's woodworking right <laughs> other than that small issue with the front not quite fitting perfectly on the bottom I would say that went really good and I think gluing that uh, wouldn't scare me. So I think we're pretty close. I don't think we even need to do, well, should we do a hole drawer? Let's do a hole drawer, take the clamps off, kind of check for strength, then, then let's go crazy with glue. Yeah, it looks good. Other than just that one, sure looks like that's bowing. I wonder if the plywood's just not straight or what. solid to me I mean I really feel like the glue is gonna turn it up a notch like I said before this is gonna get covered with a drawer front that's finish grade and you're never gonna see that because it's in the back of the cabinet for some reason I feel like the one inch screw is bit harder on this material I'm not sure if it's because I had it clamped or not there may be some lesson there about clamping the material I also feel like this this right here what this is, is me putting that screw in, and when I put it in, I'm kind of tilting like this, so when it bites in, it's actually biting back here, and then as I suck the screw tight, it's actually pulling the material away, and so you really have to pay attention to that with these pocket screws. It was doing to that to me on the three-quarter material, too. You can kind of see this little lip right here. Same thing, if you don't put that screw straight down into its joint, it'll have a tendency to suck the material. And no, your clamps aren't strong enough to stop that from happening. Maybe if I clamped a block of wood back here, it might help, but I still feel like that screw is strong enough to overpower that clamping block. We saw that with the cabinets that I put together the other day. 
if you don't you know even there it's just it's a very very thin overhang but it's real and if you don't get those on there then your drawer fronts aren't gonna fit super good so maybe as I go along like everything I'll get better at that I definitely feel like the decision to finish these sides was good so this is what they would look like if they were unfinished and of course they've just got a hair of gloss on them and of course they'll be uh, protected from water damage and water spotting so that was definitely worth the extra extra effort one of the reasons we don't need a lot of screws in this is because that dado joint is doing the majority of the work to hold and support the bottom so all we're doing with this apron kind of screwing here is helping to rigidify or stiffen the middle of the drawer and kind of make an eye beam out of it so this front is actually acting as a stiffener for the bottom so even though it's half inch plywood which is pretty stiff already this is stiffening that side of the box and of course by triangular creating a box out of this thing the sides start to get super rigid but we're going to glue that uh, dovetail joint down there so or excuse me that dado joint down there so that is going to fasten this to the bottom which will help to stiffen it even more some secret to gluing this stuff and if there is I don't know what it is I think we should probably clamp this bottom portion this dado joint probably for at least half an hour maybe an hour and let that glue bond a little bit it does say that this stuff bonds pretty quick it says clamp for 30 minutes and it says allow to dry overnight for the strongest bond um, I think clamping for 30 minutes is very doable so we'll do that for each drawer I think we've got the system worked out there weren't any big bugs that you know became obvious I think having done the other cabinets kind of worked through some of the the problems with the pocket hole system um, it's pretty self-explanatory so I think it's time to just kind of put our head down and start making drawers before I do that I thought I would share that I spent a little extra time sanding these pieces at the 220 grit level just out of curiosity to see if I could one step sand and get a nice even finish and I think the answer is yes. So I think what happens is I don't put enough pressure out here on the edges as I'm sanding because I'm afraid of sanding off this edge. And so you end up with kind of a roughness around the edges and it shows when you go to lacquer, the lacquer just is more dull around the edges. Of course there's grain involved too, so that's a factor, but I feel like spending that extra time to make sure that I got the edges nice and smooth and it paid off in the lacquering. This is only two coats of lacquer. I almost feel like that's borderline plenty to do this. These are just going to be cabinet backs so they don't need to be bulletproof necessarily with four to six coats of lacquer. All right, I'm super excited. Let's make some drawers. That drawer went good. So there's there's two more of those. So let's build all three of those first. See, that's a 66. 66.
more to go. Done. Eight drawers, done. No major problems. That was great. Can get a lot of work done in a day when you don't have a lot of meltdowns. The only one that I had was uh, an oversight on my part. I, Alyssa saved me because she texted me. <laughs> and I had put the thing in the jig, she texted me, I thought, oh, I'll check the text message. When I came back to the jig, I was like, oh my gosh, that's the finished side of that piece of wood. I almost drilled a hole in the finished side of a drawer. Oh, wow. that, that would have been a setback. So thank you for texting me, love. You saved me today. <laughs> uh, one other thing I did learn is that uh, you have to choose orientation. You've got to now, when you start putting those drawers on, you're starting to think about what's front, what's back, what's top, and what's bottom. And a few times, I decided that what I had originally decided was the top was no longer the top for a variety of reasons. And so, we're gonna have to go back and touch sand some of the tops of those things and seal that top edge because it's gotta be sealed. So sometimes I put the sealed edge on the bottom. But I, th I think as you put the drawers together, it becomes obvious what makes a good top and bottom, front and back, etc. Of course, as we go through and put the drawer fronts on, we'll again have that option to look at this and say, is this the front of the drawer or the back of the drawer? And there's a couple places where um, you're gonna wanna put them in the back. Like this guy, we actually want to be in the front because it's gonna be completely covered. Otherwise, that's gonna be the back of the drawer and it just looks terrible. You know, this looks better better. Um, so that's the one that I screwed up. But thankfully with the pocket hole screws, um, there's plenty of meat. So I just flipped the board over and put new pocket holes in there and everything worked out fine. And like I said, we'll just cover that up with the drawer front. So you'll never even see it. Can get away with a little bit of sin on some of this stuff. Once I got in a rhythm, I feel like the pocket hole screws definitely had a good bite. And then the glue, I feel like is gonna just seal the deal. Everything feels super strong. In fact, some of these are probably overdone, but I'd rather have a little too many screws than not enough, right? And I would say that the choice to go with pocket hole joinery and the dado joint, I think I feel really good about that combination. It kept the drawers simple enough so that we weren't dadoing like crazy to make this really sophisticated drawer. But at the same time, it's plenty strong enough to hold the weight that we're gonna ask these drawers to hold. Early on, those screws didn't seem like they had enough bite, but for some reason, maybe it's the glue or the clamping, I think maybe the combination of the two, it seems like when you put them in, you can go right till they click once on the impact, and that's pretty good. The glue is splooging out, which means you're dialed in. I thought I would get the cabinets, the upper cabinets done. I got the backs all sanded and lacquered, but it's just not gonna happen today. Even though we did the lowers with no problems, it's something I don't wanna rush. I wanna make sure that these things go together correctly. And it's as simple as putting the pocket holes on the wrong side, and now you've got yourself a problem. So I think I'll hold that till tomorrow. That way I can, I can give it the right amount of bandwidth. But I do feel like, even though it felt like it was slow getting off the ground today, I got the big part of what I wanted to get done, which is these drawers. We'll let the, the glue cure overnight. We'll work on getting those uppers done tomorrow. And then, I don't know, maybe we can start working on slides? I guess I really need to think about what's next in this picture. For yet another day, I feel like the dust collection did its job perfectly and we have basically no mess to clean up. So far, everything's been working really good and I can't say enough good things about this. I did have one point in time where this one of these drills slots got clogged and because of that, the, the dust was going all over the place. But once it's cleared up, the dust collection actually works really good on the Craig jig too.